this video, we will explore how you can set operational limits for rigorous fired heater models and monitor the equipment's performance using activated EDR in Aspen Hysis. The case I'm using is called Hysis CDU model, and it is available from Aspen Exchange. The fired heater is located in the preheat train sub flow sheet. The raw crude enters on the left at 47 degrees Celsius. It is sent through a network of shell and tube heat exchangers, which recover heat from the pump around streams from the column. It is then sent to the fired heater, which heats the crude from 229 degrees C to 350 degrees C. Let's turn on activated EDR to learn more about the heat exchanger models in this flow sheet. Click on the home ribbon, the activated analysis button, and the heat exchanger icon on the right. The model status panel tells us that we have one rigorous model in this flow sheet, and that's the fired heater. If we mouse over the highlight, we can learn a little bit more about this design. So our fired heater has a total heat load of 63 megawatts. It has a firebox and two convection banks. The operational risk panel shows that we have a risk detected in our fired heater model. We can hover over the highlight to see which category this risk falls into. If we click on the circle at the top, we can see the exact risk identified by EDR. So the operation warning is, a calculated mass flux in stream 1 is less than the operation minimum. The operation limits are set in the EDR design options. To get a better understanding of this warning, let's open the full EDR browser. Open the exchanger summary table by clicking on the drop down arrow below the dashboard. Click on the link for the fired heater in the first column to open model details. Click on the EDR browser button at the bottom of the form to open the browser. If you're using an earlier version of HISIS that doesn't have activated EDR, you could always check the warnings in the results summary folder from the warnings and messages form. Operation warnings are on the operation tab, and you can see that the operation warning reported by activated EDR matches exactly what is found in the EDR browser. Now let's look at how we can set our own operation limits for this fired heater model that will be used in the EDR activation warnings. Operation limits are set in the program options folder. Here we have limits for the firebox, the banks, and the streams. The warning that was detected in EDR activation is for a calculated mass flux in stream 1 and relates to this number right here, the min mass flux. Right now, this is set to 976 kilograms per second per meter squared. Let's see what the actual mass flux is for this stream. Go to the overall summary in the results folder. Here we can see the process stream mass flux for the firebox and the two banks. We can see that the mass flux in the firebox is well below the operational minimum at about 370 kilograms per second per meter squared. Now we could adjust these operation limits if we felt that there were a more appropriate value. As you can see, these numbers appear in red, which indicates that these are defaults set by the program. Because the mass flux in the firebox is so low, I'll go ahead and make some changes to the heater geometry to increase the mass flux. So I'll open up the firebox. Let's look at our main tube rows. Here we can see that we have a large number of tube passes. This could slow down the velocity of the fluid in the firebox, so I'll change this to 20. And in the tube details, I'm going to change the nominal bore from 6 inches to 4. Now I'll rerun EDR. We now have an updated set of warnings that are found by EDR activation. So now we've eliminated the warning about the mass flux, but we have another warning about heat transfer. This says that the mean heat flux of 38.4 kilowatts per meter squared in the firebox tube group 1 exceeds the operational limit of 37.9. So in this case, I feel that the heat transfer limit specified by the program is a little bit too low. So I'll go ahead and change the operational limits to make them a little more flexible. Whenever you change the operation limits in the EDR program, it's a good practice to ignore the firebox unit operation from the flow sheet separates EDR calculations from the HISIS calculations, and it makes sure that your new operation limits are included in calculations when you rerun the model. So in this case, I'm going to change this to 45 kilowatts per meter squared. I'll unignore the unit operation and rerun EDR.
So now all of the operation parameters calculated by EDR fall within the limits that we have specified, and we have no warning shown on EDR activation. This example illustrates how you can set custom operation limits and use EDR activation to flag deviations in the heat exchanger's performance right from the flow sheet.